Alright, we're going to take it from the top of my micro hydroelectric system here in Webster County, West Virginia. It all starts at the intake box. And I want to get a close-up of the stream, which filters the debris. Very important aspect of a hydro system. Keep any debris out of your line. And here's the line, 4-inch PVC, a truss block to anchor it, a clean-out, 4-inch valve, haven't had to use either of those. And from here on down, it's all buried. So let's walk on down the penstock, get away from the noise. That screen on the intake box, and again, I hate to jerk this camera around a lot, uh, I built that box out of 8 inch aluminum diamond plate, but the screen is called wedge wire. And it's, the wires are actually little triangles on a site bias that cut the water down into the box and let any debris fall over. It's a 1.5 millimeter gap between the wires. It's a cloudy day here, which is good. Wasn't so good when I had photovoltaic for my power. <laughs> but it's a hybrid now, the house is, with the uh, hydro. And we'll walk down the penstock. That's about 60 feet from the house. And here's, uh, here's the photovoltaics. And again, cloudy day, good for hydro. Let it rain, let it snow. That's electricity from the sky. Especially this time of year. Uh, all winter I'll have plenty of water. I mean seven, eight months. Here's a spot where there's a dip in the land. So I ran the four inch pipe through a six inch sleeve. This is just camouflaged with some poplar bark. Because you can see it from the house. Kind of ugly looking at plastic pipe. These beautiful mountains. There's the weir again. So walking down the penstock, which I never envisioned burying when I thought of this project, but for a number of reasons I did bury it. Um, aesthetics, not looking at ugly plastic in these nice hills. Um, freeze, even though I haven't had any issues with freezing and it's gotten very cold here. A couple times 15 below zero this year, Fahrenheit. Um, critters, bears like to chew and yank and bite on strange stuff. Here's one other spot where there's a dip with water running in it. So I put it in that six inch sleeve. Uh, I thought I'd backfill this and someday I might, but for now, since I haven't had any freeze issues, um, we're staying where it is. This is really good soil for growing rocks, big rocks. Which is one reason I didn't think I'd ever bury it. But I did. Uh, stability also. So your pipe's not moving around, maybe getting a crack. Here's another spot with a uh, dip where I built a retaining wall. Treated plywood or two bys, 5H rebar. Here's some more steps just for ease of working or walking. All four seasons here, a lot of rain and snow. Here's a spot where I had some nice big tree roots I didn't want to disturb. So I built retaining wall, another retaining wall just to keep from falling down the hill. You know, it would have been easier to go on up over that hog back there, but then I would add a high spot. Don't want a high spot in your penstock. It can be avoided. You want to keep it on a constant downhill angle. As you can see this retaining wall, this is steep. <laughs> Especially when you're working on it and it's wet and you're sliding down the hill. It came in very helpful. Here's some stairs up ahead. Steps I built. Locust logs. Locust is a very rot resistant wood. Will last many decades. Up to a flat spot up from the house where I carried down a lot of the building materials for the powerhouse. Uh, penstock, etc. The electrical conduit runs down along these stairs and then joins the same trench with the four inch penstock. So they run down here. We're about halfway to the powerhouse. It's 515 feet 
of the water line, 4 inch PVC, schedule 40, 600 feet of half inch electrical conduit to the house. And again, they're in this same trench right here. More retaining walls just for ease of walking. Some more steps. Sorry for all the bouncing. Almost at the powerhouse. Here's one other spot where there's a little retaining wall. Just to keep a dip out of the line. Keep it on a downward angle. It's buried. Keep it, keep it running straight. And uh, here's the powerhouse. I'm going to show you the overflow or the discharge actually of the water after it spins the turbine and it goes right back into the creek. So that's it here. Two four inch lines right back into the creek. No disruption, no impact to the environment. The biggest critters in this creek are salamanders and crawdads. There's no migratory fish that the weir would affect. So here's the powerhouse. This is the stream engine, the guts of the system. Put in a quick plug for uh, the designer and builder, Paul Cunningham. I'm going to shut this thing down just to make it a little quieter in here. And whenever you're opening or closing valves on a hydro system, you want to do it slowly to prevent any shocks. There's the uh, PSI valve, very important part of a hydro system. Coming in for a landing. Alright, you can take off your seat belts. So here it is. The four inch coming in the wall splits into a couple two inch braided flexible hoses into these nozzles. And here's some of the nozzles to give you an example. You can balance the opening of your nozzles to your water flow so you have constant, uh, you don't have any air in the line to maximize your electric. Now, I'll show you a couple. Here's a photograph of. Oh, let me pop this top off real quick. This is, uh, this is a two minute job. That's what it is. But there's the electrical connections. Pretty straightforward. Uh, again, they run back to the house through that half inch conduit. This is generating wild three phase 240 volt. AC and it's at high voltage because it reduces the resistance so you can use the small wires like the 12 gauge back to the house. I am on a uh, battery grid. Uh, I'm not on the grid. I'm a battery based system so when it gets to the house it is transformed down into 12 volt and then I have an inverter for 120 uh, household items, etc. So here's the turbo wheel, which is the underneath this, if you're looking up from the bottom, is this turbo wheel. It's cast bronze. Um, I think it's bronze, might be brass, one or the two. It's not cheap plastic, that's for sure. There's a nozzle on the lower right, nozzle on the upper left, so that would be that and that, which spin this direct shaft up to the alternator, which is a uh, brushless magnetic field is adjustable for optimum output. One more photo. This is sitting on a uh, 12 inch by 12 inch by 12 inch plastic box. And this is when it spins the turbine, the water drops into this box. You can see right here would be the two inch the two four inch pipes that you saw going back into the creek, the discharge, and then I have a uh, a bypass valve, just a uh, 
goes into a four inch elbow back into the box. If I ever needed to shut the valves off to the nozzles when it was freezing out, I thought that would give me a freeze protection. But I haven't had to do any of that. I haven't had any uh, maintenance or problems with, with this system. I insulated it because uh, mainly because of condensation issues. The cold water coming through here when the certain times in the year when the air is warm and moist. I'm uh, just trying to keep things dry um, and maybe for the really cold weather too but again if the water stays running like it has even though the creek will freeze over it's running underneath it and this hasn't missed a beat. Um, I would recommend an electrician who's familiar with renewable electrical components. I used a friend out here, Matt Sherald from Pinby Electric. That's an acronym for power in my backyard. And I'm just hoping this little video would inspire anybody who's got <laughs> water on any kind of a hill and gravity. Because it's, it's, it's a nice source of electricity. It's pretty dependable. Of course, the water levels fluctuate. Mm, there's times when I've had water over those that red-handled valve up by the weir. And times when uh, I, have, I don't have enough water to produce electricity in the July or August, possibly. But that's when I have a lot of sun. That's when the photovoltaic kicks in. So it's a great hybrid system, at least for my situation. Well, let's fire this thing up. Do a little blast off again, nice and slow. Take off. And that's pretty much our operating pressure around 18 psi. Yeah, so I reckon that's about it. I could go on for for quite a while. There's a lot of big learning curves as far as bearing a line, a lot of tips and techniques. But yeah, this is kind of the gist of it. Sorry about the finger there. I'm uh, not very sophisticated I'm making videos. Hopefully I can upload this thing all right. No editing. Anyway, that's it. Thanks a lot. See ya. Oops, turn it off.